this video, we're going to talk about linear regression. Linear regression is going to help us find a consistent best fit line for a set of data. To understand how we find a regression line, it's useful to take a look at what we call the residuals of some best fit lines that we've found. A residual is the difference between the y value of the data point and the y value of the line. These are typically small quantities. In statistics, this is represented by y sub i, or the ith y value, minus y hat, which is the y value of the line. In the graphs below, we have two plots. The first plot is the scatter plot with the best fit line, and then the second plot, the right hand plot, is that same graph with the residuals plotted as x's. The residuals all fall close to the x-axis. In the first graph on the page, we have a best fit line that is a perfect diagonal, and the scatter plot has points that are equidistant from that line to the top and bottom of it. There are 0.5 units above and below the line in each case for x values of 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. For example, at 5, the best fit line goes through y equals 5, and the actual data points are at 4.5 and 5.5 on the y-axis. Let me blow up what happens at x equals 5. If we wanted to calculate the residual, there are actually two residuals at this value of x equals 5. There's a residual for the point above the line, and so remember the value there was 5.5, and the value of the line was 5. This 5.5 is the yi value, and 5 is the y hat value. If we do that subtraction, 5.5 minus 5, we're just finding the vertical distance between those points, which is 0.5. And if we go over to x equals 5, where the residuals are plotted, we see an x at 5 comma 0.5. If we look at the point below that line, the yi is 4.5, and the y hat is still 5. So if we do 4.5 minus 5, we get negative 0.5 for the residual. And if we go over to x equals 5 on the graph of the residuals, you'll see another residual value at negative 0.5. We can go through and do this for any of the points. And because those points are all equidistant from the line, one above and one below, we have a pretty boring set of residuals. For the x value of 1, the residual is at 0.5 and negative 0.5. For the x value of 2, the residual is at 0.5 and negative 0.5, etc., through all the values. In the second graph on the page, we have a decreasing line of best fit, roughly half the points below it and half the points above it, but they're not equally spaced from the line anymore. I'm not going to give values for all the points. Let's just zoom in on one point that's far away from the line and one point that's very close to the line. We'll look at the point 4.5 comma 3.5. This point is a distance of about 1.3 above the best fit line. So if we look at the second graph, the one that includes the residuals, we would expect to see a residual at 4.5 comma 1.3, and we do. Let's look at a point that is just below the line, the point 5.5 comma 2. The distance from this point to the line there's barely any distance. It's maybe 0.1. And because the point is below the line, it's actually a residual of negative 0.1. If we move over to the second graph, we would expect to see the residual at 5.5, negative 0.1. And we do. The basic goal of linear regression is to find the linear equation that just minimizes those residuals. So the idea is that we want to add all the residuals up and minimize the result. However, some of the residuals are positive and some are negative, and we don't want them to just cancel each other out. We want to add up all the positive ones and minimize it, and add up all the negative ones and minimize it. Turns out there's an easier way to do that. To avoid the cancellation of the positive and negative residuals, we're just going to square all of them. And when we square all of them, then they all become positive. Then we can take a sum and minimize it over a process. Now we're looking at a best fit line with its residuals on the left and a best fit line with the squared residuals on the right. The thing to notice here is that on the right hand graph, all of the residuals are zero or greater. And because most residuals are small, decimals under one, when we square them, they move even closer into the x-axis. So if we just take a look at one of these negative residuals and look what happens when we square it, you can see it's moved in a little closer to the x-axis, but is now positive. So what is linear regression? It's a statistical technique that just takes all of those 
residual squared terms, that's yi minus y hat in parentheses squared, and it minimizes that sum. Now we're not going to go through all the statistics in this class, we're just going to learn how to do linear regression in Desmos. To do that, we start with the basic linear model y equals mx plus b, the slope-intercept form we've come to know and love. And to make it a linear estimation model or a linear regression model, we simply change the equals in that formula to a tilde, which is an approximation symbol. Finding the linear regression in Desmos basically involves two steps. One, plot your data in a table, and two, insert the estimation model below the table using whatever variables and subscripts you used in your data table, and that's very important that the two things match up. We're going to start with a simple case involving an XY data table. I'm going to read the data in the table as I type it into Desmos. I start by inserting a table. It already has the variables x and y in the top row of the table labeled x sub 1 and y sub 1. It's exactly the way we want it. I'll read the data going across in rows. 0, 3.1 is the first data row. 1, 2.3 is the next set. 2, 2.5, 3, 1.9, 4, 1.6, and 5, 1.9. Examining the data, there is a slightly decreasing trend, and it does look like the data may represent a linear function. We could, in this case, probably even eyeball a line of best fit, but we're going to calculate the regression line. Remember the point-slope form would normally be y equals mx plus b. If you just type y equals mx plus b, you're going to see an error message next to it. It says there's too many variables in this. We need to correct two things. We need to tell it which variables are in our table, which is y1, just type a 1 after the y, it'll automatically make it a subscript, and then x1, just type a 1 after the x, which will automatically make it a subscript. Now it's still a little upset with us, and that's because we haven't made it an estimation model. We still have an equal sign in here. So let's change that to a tilde, and as soon as we do that, bam, you should see a line of best fit appear on your data. This line has a slope of m equals negative 0.248571 and a y-intercept of 2.8381. For now, you can ignore the rest of the data there. We should be able to write a linear equation for this data. It is y equals negative 0.248571. Let's actually round that a little bit. 2.49x plus 2.838. That's y equals mx plus b with the m and b numbers inserted. And when that's graphed, you can see it exactly matches the best fit line that was drawn for us. So we've found a linear regression model for the data. In our next example, we're using a data table involving lowercase t and capital P, maybe something like time and population. Again, let me read the data as I enter it into Desmos. I'm going to insert a table of data and then edit x1 to be t1, lowercase t, and y1 to be capital P1. In the first row of data, we have 0 and then 14,287. Now, I put the comma in here just to show you what happens if you write 14, 287. You'll get a little error and it says Table entries must be simple expressions. This type of expression is not allowed. That's simply because I put the comma in. So make sure you don't enter data with a comma. Desmos won't like that. The next data pair is 5, 15,145, then 10, 16,236, 15, 17,256, 20, 18,321, and 25, 19,187. Clearly, we're not seeing the data in Desmos yet. I'm on a standard zoomed-in window. Remember that the little magnifying glass to the left side of the data table, the zoom fit icon, will jump you directly to a view that shows you that set of data. Looks like it's a pretty linear increasing trend. Now let's write the equation that represents the data. We might normally write y equals mx plus b for a linear equation, but in this case, y is p1, make sure you use a capital P if that's what's used in your table, x is t sub 1, which also matches our table, and then I need to change that equal sign to an estimation sign, the tilde. Bam! There is our line of best fit 
Looks like it fits our data really well. If we wanted to write the linear model for this, it would be capital P equals, we grab the M value from the linear regression, that's 200.274 T plus the B value, which is 14,235.2. And you can see that this line perfectly matches the best fit line that was drawn for us. So we have a model for our data, and we could even write it in function notation as P of T equals 200.274 T plus 14,235.2. In our final example, we're looking between the years 2015 and 2019 at the daily active users for Slack, which appears like it might be linear. On the graph, you can see that Slack's daily active users increased much slower prior to January of 2015. Let's find a regression model to plot against the data, and I've estimated the data points for you in the table below the graph. We're going to assume the growth of Slack continues in the same way, and then predict the DAUs for Slack in 2025. The variables are declared for us. T is the number of years since January 2015. All of the data in the table is the January data, so January 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, and 2019. We can re-index those with the given time. January of 2015 would be zero years. January 2016 would be one, then two, then three, then four for our T values. The estimated DAUs in millions start with January at 0.6, then 2.3, 4.8, 7.5, and 10. The next thing we need to do is jump over to Desmos, plot that data, and find the regression model. In my data table, I have T sub 1 and capital D sub 1 for the, for the header row, and then my data pairs 0, 0 0.6. By the way, if you are on a keyboard, you can use tab to go from one cell to the next. It will tab down to the next line for you. My next data pair is 1, 2.3, then 2, 4.8, 3, 7.5, and 4, 10. I'm going to use zoom fit to find my data. Looks pretty linear from this. Let's go ahead and find the regression model. Remember, you could start by thinking about y equals mx plus b, then replace the variables. So instead of y, you're going to have capital D sub 1. Instead of x, you're going to have t sub 1. And instead of the equal sign, you're going to use a tilde for the estimation model. There's our line of best fit. It has a slope of 2.4 and a y-intercept of 0.24. I'm going to double check it by plotting it. D equals 2.4 T plus 0.24. Looks perfect. So I have a model. D of T equals 2.4 T plus 0.24. Now there was one more thing we wanted to do in this problem. We wanted to predict the DAUs for Slack in 2025. Now 2025 would be 10 years after 2015. So what I really want to do here is find capital D of 10. Now you can do that two ways. You can plug in 10. So 2.4 times 10 plus 0.24. Or we could run over to Desmos and just ask it, write D of T so that it's in function notation, and then write D of 10. And that'll give us a value of 24.24. And you should get that, whether you calculated it by hand or use Desmos to do it. Let's recap. The important thing to know here is that to find a linear regression model, you want to go over to Desmos, plot your data, and then use a linear estimation model that matches the variables and subscripts in your data table.